Hello, in this video we'll talk about ionotropic and metabotropic receptors. These receptors are two type of receptors which are found in membranes which are involved in transport and signal transduction. Let's talk about the ionotropic receptors first. Ionotropic receptors are ligand gated ion channels which are made up of 3, 4 or 5 subunits. Generally, they are heteromers. That means all these subunits are different from each other. Now, they have two broad structural features. One is the ligand binding domain, which is present in the extracellular surface, and it binds to the ligand. And the next one is the transmembrane domain, which actually forms the ion conducting pore. For simplicity, we'll describe the ionotropic receptors by these kind of cartoons. Here, we have ionotropic receptors in two different configurations based on the presence or absence of the ligand. So this is the ionotropic receptor when the ligand is absent. In this situation, the gate of these ionotropic receptors is closed and therefore the ions cannot pass through this channel. Now imagine there would be the ligand which would bind to the extracellular domain of these ionotropic receptors. This leads to a conformational change in the gate and now the gate is open which would allow the diffusion or the passing of these ions through these pores and that is how ionotropic receptors work. So, so we kind of simplified the mode of action but the question is where we can find ionotropic receptors. They can be found in many locations. One common location is the synapse of the neurons. In the synapses, ionotropic receptors are generally found on the postsynaptic membrane where they bind to neurotransmitters and allows cation influx in the postsynaptic membrane. Other than that, we can find them in neuromuscular junctions, stomach and the lining of gastrointestinal tract. For example, in parietal cells of the stomach, we can find ligand gated ion channels as well. Now let's talk about a synapse and try to understand the functionality of the ligand gated ion channels. When the presynaptic action potential reach the synapse, it would lead to neurotransmitter release. These neurotransmitter re neurotransmitters work like a ligand for the ligand gated ion channels present on the postsynaptic membrane. Now these neurotransmitters would bind to the ligand binding cleft. This would allow a conformational change in these ionotropic receptors, which further allows ions, in this case cations, to pass through this channel. When cations pass through and get inside the postsynaptic membrane, it would create a positive charge inside the membrane. It would change the membrane potential to be more positive and that allows a wave of depolarization in the postsynaptic membrane and that's how the electrical impulses pass through the neurons and pass through the synapses. Now there could be ionotropic receptors which allow the passage of cations. There could be also ionotropic receptors which allows passage of anions like the GABA receptors present in the uh, many many type of neurons in our nervous system. Now let's talk about metabotropic receptors. Metabotropic receptors can be also found in our nervous system and they are generally found in olfactory sensory neurons out of many examples. So in the olfactory sensory neurons, we can found, find these metabotropic receptors which are G protein coupled receptors. So they bind to odor molecules which leads to a conformational change and that allows GTP exchange in the trimeric G protein associated with this receptor. This GTP bound G protein would eventually activate adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase is an enzyme which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. Now on the membrane of olfactory sensory neurons, we have ligand gated ion channels which are activated by cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP is actually binding to these ion channels and allowing passage of ions through them. So here the ion channel is not directly bound to an extracellular uh, ligand but the ligand binds to a different receptor which leads to a cascade of events ultimately allowing a ion channel to open. 
So this is how metabotropic receptors function. Structural differences can be appreciated at this point, but let's talk about some functional differences. Ionotropic receptors are really rapid and their responses are fast. This lasts for fractions of milliseconds. Whereas metabotropic receptors are relatively slow, their response kinetics vary from several milliseconds to even seconds. So now we can appreciate the differences and similarities between the uh, ionotropic and metabotropic receptors. We can also appreciate where they are situated especially in our nervous system. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. So you can support my channel via Patreon or if you are an Indian viewer, you can support me via Bhim UPI app. My courses are also present in Unacademy. You can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Do let me know in the comment how you like my video. If you have a suggestion, please put it in the comment. Thank you. See you next video.